right. So let's see if it updates, and it does. <clears throat> well, this is our first um, badge team meeting of uh, 2024. So um, we are a lot um, uh, of ambitious things. Oh, crap. I got to do something about my volume. Hold on. <laughs> All right. So yeah, um, there's the mute button. So I'm not hearing myself and echoing. Um, yeah, we have a lot of ambitious projects this year. So to the badge team who are on the call, um, can you see what I'm sharing on the screen? We have our, our team goals. Yeah, I can see. Okay. Yep. All right, so um, basically uh, our main badges, it's really two badges, it's just we're gonna run one twice. Um, and the Cowboys versus Dinosaur is the theme for that one. It's the 3000 Society badge. That, co that conference is actually happening in May, um, but we only need about 50 then, and then we'll run another 150 or so um, after that uh, for DEF CON. Then the next one is the Godzilla Versus, which will include a, a shitty add-on set. Um, that's for DEF CON. Um, we'll also do extra Godzilla Versus add-ons as giveaways. Um, and then uh, later in the year, towards November, we'll have a badge that the theme's yet to be announced for besides DFW. So it's one, two, three badges, really. Um, and a lot of shitty add-ons. And then badge assists, um, we have uh, Ninjitian is going to have the Hello Kitty badge. Um, and then I am working on a badge for um, the Blue Team Village. I'm helping them with a badge. And we're not going to talk about that one on these meetings. I'm just kind of doing that one on my own for them for right now. That's why it says redacted. So no, no secrets given away in these streams about their badge. Maybe... As they get closer, they may, may want me to share details about it, but for now, that one will be secret. So really, the two that are up front are these, and the Cowboys versus Dinosaurs is coming up first. So that's the ones that we need to, to start work on. And uh, I will um, start just by um, going through the, the GitHub stuff real quick to show you what's where, and then we'll jump right into the concepts. Um, and then after that, we can talk about what's to do for each of these. So um, I set up the private repos for Cowboys versus Dinosaurs and Godzilla versus, and then we're going to use this project um, uh, Kanban board to um, uh, uh, like track the the work that we're going to do on each of these badges. So um, with that, uh, uh, let me uh, hold on. I'm having some issues with my stream. It looks like it's wanting to kick me out. Hold on. <laughs> I have to go to my channel. Yes, I did that. All right, that's better. <laughs> yeah, it was acting funny for me. Okay, so... Oh, and it looks like, uh, yeah, we I can see the chat now. It wasn't giving me that before. So it looks like we got a couple of people on the stream. All right, so let's jump into the concept. Um, so this is where I'm going to jump to paper for a minute. And so the um, we'll start with the 3000 Society Cowboys versus Dinosaurs. This is going to have unique shape that's based on the 3000 Society logo that I'll show you on screen in a minute. Um, and then the thought was have like the main art in the center um, and then we can um, have some, some text or graphics around the outside um, that's not part of the main artwork. Um, one of the things that they wanted incorporated into the badge um, was to show the four different um, suits from a playing card kind of like cowboys you know they they play cards and so um, they wanted to show those four suits um, maybe to use the badge in some kind of game 
um, that made me think of cowboys and dinosaurs playing poker. So it's kind of a twist when you first think cowboys versus dinosaurs, you're thinking one is shooting the other, the other one's clawing the other, and this would be, they're, they're still opposing each other, but at a poker table. Um, so I thought that was, that was going to be kind of cool um, in a concept. And I'll show you some of the, the art ideas I had around that. And then the second badge, I don't have a shape for it yet. This is the Godzilla versus badge. Um, the idea is it's going to have some art of Godzilla, like blowing fire with like the uh, Tokyo in the background. Um, but he doesn't have an opponent because there's a shitty add-on connector there where you can plug in who his, uh, his opponent's going to be. So we can have SAOs for Mothra, Rodan, Ghidorah, uh, Mecha Godzilla. Um, that was just like four that I came up with as like the most popular, I think, off the top of my head. Um, so those uh, I thought would be cool, shitty add ons. Um, and they could play well into the badge. So the SAO becomes like part of the badge. It's a, a main component instead of just an add on. So I thought that was a neat idea. And that's kind of the concept for that. And I was thinking originally of doing the 3000 Society as a simple just light a few LEDs but then I thought no we, if we're gonna do it we're we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do it good and so um, to, to make things easier on ourselves um, I wanted to standardize across the components so the ESP32 dev board um, that's like this guy I think or something like that um, the the dev board which we used on the future badge worked really well and it's easy for people to solder if we wanted to make this a kit um, so I decided let's do that for both of these but lipo battery this year um, and that means we're gonna have to have a charge circuit um, never done a charge circuit before have ideas on it um, actually I'm looking at um, a particular add-on board um, for the the charge circuit what is this price lower nice so we're getting advertisements <laughs> all right um, <laughs> um but yeah the the charge circuit i was looking at little add-on boards like um uh, that are already pre-built um, that may work. It may be something that is easy enough. We can just um, put it on the, the badge ourselves. So that'll be one of the to-dos is um, I got some of these little add-on boards. If I can find them. Yeah, these little guys. Um, and breadboarded them out and they seem to work okay, but it's very simplistic. And I'm thinking um, it, being that it's on uh, like using surface mounts people might not be able to kit it out and easily solder it so if we're going to make it a kit we might have to use this but if we're going to actually pre-build them then um, we can actually just build these components on the badge but the first thing we'd have to do is research what exactly is on here uh, i know the main chips but how are they wired together um, can we get a schematic on this that way we can build it ourselves so that, that's one of the to-dos that we will be putting on there as far as like reverse engineering that little, um, I think it's like a TP46 or something like that. But that that little chip um, could be easily put on the badge itself and, and get rid of uh, another daughter board. All right, I've been talking for a while on concepts. Uh, open the floor to the badge team. Uh, you guys have any questions? You... Um, uh, liking this idea have any ideas about it are you going to have different uh art for the 3000 society versus the second place they're going like is it just going to be an actual different board um yet to be determined um when i did this in in prior years like when i did the big um uh godzilla versus blade runner one right I actually did different art for the 3000 Society badge versus the DEF CON version of that badge. Same PCB and electronics, it's just the silk screen art was different. Might do something like that. Um, might change it up 
slightly like if we if we see for the 3000 society this worked well but this one i really wish we would have changed that we'll have an opportunity to change whatever didn't work that way when we release the defcon version we we fix any known flaws but i i think that the idea is to minimize changes between the two not necessarily um make them identical but we can make them identical if it works All right, so let me go back to my display here and uh, I'll just show this first. So this is the 3000 Society logo and you see this little graphic that um, is part of the logo there. I'm thinking something similar to this, maybe not with as many pointy edges because that might hurt people. Um, but I, I like the idea of that as a badge shape um, for their badge. It's kind of circular, um, so we, we could fit a nice circle in the center with the art and, and do stuff on the edges. Um, but uh, I'm open to suggestions there. That was just my initial thought was we can just make it this shape and that'd be kind of cool. And then for the, the cowboys versus dinosaurs, I worked up some AI art just to give me an idea of what that might look like. And this is one of the pictures that came out of that um, that I thought it was a good idea. Like, obviously, we um, there's a lot of grayscale in here, so we can't just cut and paste that on a badge. We're going to have to redo the art um, for the badge. But as far as concept art, I think this is a what I was thinking of for the concept. Um, so, yeah, I have a couple of dinosaurs. I love the dinosaur wearing a cowboy hat. That's like a, an awesome thing. And then where like these cards are, are all kind of face down, we can have like maybe each person holding up one card of each of the suits. That way we get that concept that um, the con wanted, which was one of each of the suits is showing. So that was just something I was thinking there. What do you guys think of that? And I should say, I use the term guys in a gender neutral way, so don't take offense, please. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take it that, uh, well, I should check. I closed my other Discord. Hold on. All right, so uh, just making sure there wasn't a chat coming in that I needed to, to account for. So, yeah, it looks like uh, you guys are liking it so far. So. Um, let's look at the Godzilla versus, um, cause that's the, uh, the next one. Um, yeah, it is kind of silly <laughs> artwork. Um, that was one of the comments that was silly. So for the Godzilla versus, um, I was thinking we could have, oops, that wasn't the one I was looking at just a minute ago. Yeah, there it is. Something along the lines of this art here. Um, once again, this is AI art that we'll have to rework, but this is uh, my idea of the concept. Like we would have Godzilla um, and with a Tokyo background, but maybe he's blowing fire. And then off on the other side, we would just have empty city over here. So it looks like he's just getting ready to destroy more city. So it won't look empty. It'll just look like Godzilla is kind of off to one side. Um, but then uh, when you plug in the SAO, that would um, allow you to put the uh, the other monsters there. And if we had like the Godzilla versus at the top, then on the top of the SAO, we could have the name of the monster um, in the same font. So it would look like Godzilla versus Rodan or Godzilla versus Ghidorah or whichever monster is fighting. I think that would be kind of a, a cool thing to do, have the fonts match and... Um, this way the, the monsters are identified in that nice, bold um, uh, font, uh, the same way Godzilla will be. And I think a question came in, is that the Eiffel Tower? I don't know. Like I said, this is uh, uh, mid-journey, um, quick, give me some concept art that looks like this. And yes, I do think that looks similar to an Eiffel Tower. I don't know if uh, Tokyo has a similar tower or not but <laughs> it doesn't matter because this is not the exact art we're going to use it's just concept and then some of the other concept art like what would uh 
a Ghidorah look like. That's the three-headed monster. I think this one has way too many legs, but I love the, the look of the face on Ghidorah here, so I may steal that for the art. Um, Mecha Godzilla, and here's Rodan. I don't think I got a good Mothra one. Mothra's kind of hard. If you try to get AI to do Mothra, um, you get some really ugly look, um, looking moths. They, they don't <laughs> look like monsters from the movie. So that's kind of the, the art side of the concept. So um, questions on any of that, suggestions. Um, do you think it's too much to have like three or four SAOs um, bundled with a, a badge? So you would include all of the, um, like if you got the badge, they come with all the SAOs is the idea? Yeah, yeah, that, that was the idea. So the, the badge would come with the full set of SAOs. And then okay. we would run extra SAOs to like give away to people just the SAO alone. But the badge would come with all of them because it's a, a, a major part of the badge, right? It's not just an add-on. It's actually the Godzilla versus we've made it a central part of the badge. This way you can customize your badge and put whatever monster you want them to fight up front. Do you think it would be a little better to have Godzilla like far in your image farther to the right so the big building on the right is gone? And so you oh yeah, absolutely. The, the, yeah, the, I, I think Godzilla needs to be monster. off to the right. Um, it, it's just whenever you try to do an AI image like that. It's always, if you use the word Godzilla or any named thing like that, it puts it in the center. So, um, and, and I didn't take a lot of time to like move it around. I know you can, but it's just concept art. So I just did a quick and dirty and yeah. So in my vision, Godzilla would be off to the right side and then the left side would be where the, um, the SAO would go. Or we could reverse it. I mean, we have Godzilla on the left, SAO on the right, whatever looks better. Um, but yeah, Godzilla will be on one side of the badge, and then the SAO would be the monster he's fighting on the other side. Yeah, just with that image, it looked like the whatever he's fighting would be like way too off. Yeah, 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 and that, yeah, that image, not um, not where we need to be, but just to give you guys an idea of what I'm thinking about. All right. It might be cool if, if there's a spot on the badge that's open for the SAO, but that the connector is like if you do one of those sandwich two board deals like you did with the uh, Back to the Future badge. Yeah. Like if the connector for the SAO is down on the second board, so when you plug the SAO in, it's almost flush with the top board. You know, oh, so it's like you're. Yeah. You know, so it's not sticking way far away from the board, right? It almost like if you yeah, get them all like the that. same shape, they could literally fit into a cutout of the main board, so that you literally plug it in, and it like becomes a flush thing with whichever monster is being fought. You know? Yeah. So we have like a, a cutout on one board, and then the board underneath is where our SAO connector is, and this way, the the SAO would still go on top. But it'd be flush. I like that. I'm going to take that idea. Yeah, even if it's just one board thickness above, like, so then that mm -hmm. way you can kind of overhang and each one can cover different amounts of art that's on the board below it. Yeah. So you get a different look, but it almost looks like it's flush and part of it, you know? Yeah, that's a great idea. I love that. Yeah, I'm definitely taking that one and, and going to work that into the design. Because, I mean, those SAO connectors are um as tall as the the sandwich badge is thick so i think that would be perfect yeah. sizing yeah 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 it's just all about making sure the thickness that you're spacing with whatever standoffs you're going to use between the two boards right or however it's done but yeah. yeah i think i think it would work it'd be pretty cool yep cool all right well then we got to talk about um a little bit about the circuit stuff um because i've not done a a lipo with a charge circuit that's something i've been playing with for a few weeks because that's one of the things i'm working on um with the um the blue team village uh badge as well um and let me see if i can open this up in a browser 
Oh, I'm not sharing the screen. Okay, let me share the screen. Um, so yeah, this was kind of the idea that I came up with. So if you imagine the um, uh, the board on the far right is our ESP32 dev board, right? And the board on the far left is that little um, charge board. Um, uh, and I'm drawing a blank what that's called, but it's like... Um, uh, it's TP forty something. I'll I'll paste bin it in the the bench uh, paste bin area once I get the link. Um, but this guy um, does charging. The problem with him is that if you try to to do charge and pass through, um, if it's plugged in because it's also drawing power for the ESP. Um, it won't ever fully charge. So you need to throw a switch in here to say, okay, if it's charging, then the ESP is cut off from the battery. He gets no battery power while he's charging. When the thing is charged up, then we flip a switch and now the battery can power the ESP again. And then this guy in the middle here, this is just the, um, the voltage regulator, basically to bring up the voltage from the 3.7 volts to the voltage in which I think in this example, they were using a uh, five volt and that that's probably what we would use as well because the voltage in I think can take, uh, at least on the dev boards we're using, it can go between um, four and 12 volts uh, on the input side. Um, so if we boost it up to five volts, then that, that e even if the battery runs low and it starts to, to get a little below five volts we're still not near the the cutoff uh for the esp so we can really drain the batteries uh fully um that way and this way we take advantage of the voltage regulator that's on the esp dev board um the only question is do i want to have three <laughs> add-on boards or do i want to put some of these components on the the actual badge and I, I don't think that decision's been made yet. I know like for um, the uh, Blue Team Village, that's something we're looking at. For both of these badges, we'll have to look at that. And maybe um, it, it's it, an either or, like we can build the pads on the badge to do the surface mount components, but also have pins that would allow us to add the, the uh, daughter board as well. This way, if we're doing pre-assembled, we can do the surface mounts for the ones we're assembling and, and giving out to people. Um, but if we're giving kits away, we could just ignore the, the SMD pads on the board and have them solder the through holes uh, for the, uh, the other component. If we make it functionally the same, that, that would work. Um, I just don't know what the, <clears throat> the pros and cons are to, to either effect. I think the, the biggest con with using the, the daughter board is that <clears throat> their um, size, right? And we have to account for their size on the badge size. Um, so like here is one, let me see. Oh, this is a smaller voltage regulator. Uh, this is a booster. Oh, once again, sharing the wrong thing. Um, so yeah, this one is the booster that'll go up to five volts. It's pretty small. I think we could live with that. And it has components on both sides and it's cheap. Um, this is the one that um, is a little larger. Um, and I would be wondering about, is it worth putting this big thing on there? If we have the real estate, this is probably a, an easy option. And they're both really cheap. So it's not like price is the driving factor here. Uh, it'd probably be a wash if we got the components ourselves versus plug this thing on. But yeah, I think I, I'd like to, at least with this guy, um, get a, a schematic or something. I haven't, uh, I can, I'm sure as many of these are out there on AliExpress and even on Amazon, there's got to be some schematics floating around that show how this thing is wired up. I just haven't had time to Google it. Um, so maybe, yeah. yeah. What was that? On the battery, which battery were you thinking of using? Do you have one selected? Um, I don't have a specific one, but I'm looking at several batteries, different 
sizes. So I, I got like a big thick boy. I got one that's a little smaller, one that's skinnier. And I was mainly looking at the different um, sizes to see what's going to fit best on the badge, right? So like this uh, 2000 milliamp hour one, well, these are all 10 millimeters thick, which is the most we can do to fit inside the sandwich. Because when you put the male and the female together, you have 11 millimeters. So it only gives us one millimeter of, uh, of distance. So we can't really go more than 10 thick. Um, but then the, the other choice is just the, the length and width, right? And the longer and the wider it is, the more milliamp hours you're going to get. So this one, I think this one is a, a, a 10, 30, 40. So it's 30 this way, 40 this way in millimeters. And it's 1,200 milliamp hours. Um, this one is a 10, 20, 50. So it goes 50, but it's only 20. So if we needed that skinny, um, we could do that. But it's only 1,000 milliamp hours. So there's... It, there's a lot of options and there's a lot of decisions that we'll have to make on how much stored power will we need. Um, is a thousand enough? Is 1200 enough? Do we need 2000? Um, Cause that'll drive the battery size. Um, and then uh, of the battery size, are there constraints? Like, do I need a super skinny one to fit in amongst other stuff? Or can I go with this type of package? Um, See, so yeah, I don't think we've selected a specific battery, but it will be this style, one of these styles of batteries, basically the um, the juice pouch battery. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I was asking because lithium polymer batteries like that, mm -hmm. you, you need a battery management circuit because you can't drain them. Because if you drain them, they basically puff up and they become unusable. So you can only, like, they, you charge at, like, a certain voltage. You can't drain below, like, three-point-something volts. And, you know, so, so they have a range, and they have to be managed. Otherwise, it will uh, destroy them very quickly. Yeah. Um, so, and the charge circuit probably deals with that. But your circuit that would, like, step up and boost the voltage will just draw until the thing can draw no more, right? So yeah. uh, I think um, I can I can help look at that part. Okay. At least I've, you know, I haven't built any battery management stuff, but I'm fairly familiar with it and what those batteries need. Um, so maybe, um, maybe I could look at that a little bit and and that charging circuit. And um, and if you have an idea of like just like a uh, you know a power budget of like okay, how many LEDs do we want? What do we think is going to be the draw when it's running or whatever? Then maybe we could do like some kind of quick calculations with one of those ESP thirty twos and everything else and see okay, how long do we think we could get for runtime and you know, do we want that to drive some of the decision or, yeah. or, uh, you know, or be purely just going to be stuck with size limitations or something like that? Yeah, honestly, I, I was thinking we, we were going to need to be in about the 1200 milliamp hour range between 12 and 15, because, um, the future badge, um, was using a nine volt battery, which had about 800 milliamp hours. Um, and that was not enough. Now it had other limitations uh, that made it draw power even quicker. So it was probably the equivalent of, of maybe 500 milliamp hours uh, based on the way it was drawing power off of it. Um, but that was not even powering up the, the wireless. That was mainly just lighting a whole bunch of LEDs. Now that had a lot of LEDs. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to go with as many LEDs on this one. Um, but I was thinking if we get someplace around 1200, maybe 1500, that would be perfect. Um, that's why I was liking this. It's a smaller size, 1200. So something like this would work like the, uh, the 10, 30, 40 size, um, with 1200 milliamp hours. Um, what's the price difference between those? Almost no difference. I mean, it's, it's pretty comparable. I mean, I, I when you're buying them on Amazon, um, I think like uh, one is like two bucks, the other's three bucks, this one's a buck fifty. But when you're buying them on AliExpress, um, they're all at bulk about the same equivalent price, at least from okay. what I've researched so far. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not too yeah, worried to about the, the price tag. Because, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, okay. I mean, I always lean towards a bigger a bigger battery myself just so like stuff mm -hmm. runs for a really long time if, if prices you know equal but um, but yeah. i think as long as we have a good like 
circuit for powering things and you know the charging and all that stuff works without people having to flip switches certain ways or remember to do things then i think it's a you know good design yeah yeah i'd agree cool yeah if you can help take a look at that and and i'm sure we're we're not the first people to to come up with something like this so um we shouldn't try to reinvent the wheel if there's something out there that someone's put together a design for let's try to borrow their design and use it yeah no i plan to steal profusely there's a lot of open source <laughs> projects that use uh lipo batteries and everything else right and so it's just yeah. a matter of going and finding their schematic of something that's been tried and tested of parts that we can get yep. that are you know fairly um, low cost and then just incorporating it in there cool Well, that's good. Um, yeah, I'll get those added. I don't have the, um, well, I got circuit design planning. I, I'm going to add a specific one about the charge circuit on there, and um, that way we keep track of that. So, yeah, um, there's that. And then um, you mentioned LEDs. Um, I have no idea. Uh, and typically the way I work these badges is I'll, I'll start some of the primary art first just to get an idea of what's going to, to look good. Where would it look good to put LEDs? Where would it look good to highlight this? Until you get some, some primary art done, it's hard to even conceptually say, well, I'm going to need 12 LEDs or 16, right? You, you really have to, to have a better idea of the art. And I don't think we're there yet. We have some concepts, but I think we, we need to get some work done on art. Um, and that's where I was going to see if uh, I go back to uh, my Discord key closed. Damn it. Go back to the Discord yeah, chat. Think, yeah, we I had someone that was going to help with the art. Know the, oh, I was just going to say, if you just know the type of LEDs, then, mm -hmm. you know, I could also just build some test circuits with like X number of whatever LEDs and then see are there interesting mm -hmm. sleep modes. We could put the ESP32 in when we're not driving them or other things like that that just increase your power budget, you know? Yeah. yeah and I think for for an estimate of the, the LED types that we would use, I really like the, um, uh, the NeoPixel LEDs that I used on the Future Badge, and I think I used it on the badge before that as well, because um, they're small in size, they're, they're still through-hole LEDs, but they're small, um, and uh, they work with all the NeoPixel libraries, so it's easy to code to, um, and, and you have one of those badges, so you, you know the exact LED, and I can get you specs on it, I think it's on the website for that badge, um, but that would be the only the complex same? one. Are you going to use the same ESP32? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'll just play with that then as like a dev uh, kit. Yeah. Yeah, and I think other than maybe um, uh, four of those um, NeoPixels, any other LEDs we use will, will just be uh, normal uh, single color LEDs. So just like your, your typical three millimeter uh um, two pin LED. <laughs> oh, and it looks like uh, Cyber Seal is here. <laughs> so, just a little overwhelmed. So, we will get you caught up with art. Don't be overwhelmed. I know there's a lot going on here. But, um, Basically, what what I want to do with the art, um, since we're, we've come back around to that, is just use those like reference uh, images, those concept images, which I did put those in the repo. If if you're wondering where those are at, so like in uh, the cowboys versus dinosaurs, if you go to art, and then there's an inspiration folder. That's where you'll see the dump of a whole bunch of AI art. Um, just use that as an inspiration to actually create like black and white line art. So um, if you're going to do uh, the cowboys versus dinosaurs first, then uh, start with that picture I was uh, just sharing. I don't know if I got it open still. Let me see this one. 
Yeah, so th this one would be a good one to just to start. Um, just as a concept, you, you would have to line draw a, a lot of this. Um, uh, and you can use either Photoshop or AI or whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and then we can convert it. And the question is, can I send you different ideas for outlining characters and general structure? Absolutely. Um, feel free to, to use the badge chat um, or um, uh, if you're uh, working with the GitHub, um, you can actually just throw a notes file out here, right? Um, so in the, in the art directory, you can either add it to the end of the readme or just add another notes and upload it to there. And then we can use that to track our notes on the specific badges. Cool. Yeah, and I think um, as far as art goes, the, the Cowboys versus Dinosaurs is probably the priority because that one's happening sooner. All right. Um, I think that's about it. If we can work out the charge circuit stuff um, for the uh, for the badges, and I, that's another reason why I wanted to use like the ESP and the same lipo and the same everything on both these badges because it's going to make building two badges easier by having the same major components. Yeah, there might be differences in LEDs and there might be some slight differences on what other components we put on there, but um, if the main stuff is the same, it'll be easy for us to move from this one to that one. Um, oh, code. That was the last thing I wanted to talk about. So yeah, the code, um, I'm assuming because the, the ESP um, worked really well having Arduino code on there. It, it made it very accessible for people to code in the Arduino scripting language. I wanted to do the same thing um, for these badges uh, on the code side. And I've already started in the, the repos, um, the, the code directory layout. And so basically uh, the readme file goes through a, a lot of it and there's also a quick start file. Um, if you're going to work on code for the badges, take a look at this, read through it. Um, the Arduino IDE um, really is sucks at being portable. Um, it always downloads latest versions of whatever libraries, and that may break stuff. And so by using the CLI with the um, Arduino CLI config file, um, this... Uh, and, and the setup file, uh, this actually keeps us all using the same exact libraries at the same exact versions so that it will all uh, work the same. If one of us can compile it and successfully, all of us can compile it successfully. So that's kind of the, the layout. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here because there's a lot of stuff here, but I did kind of put together like a, a, a test um, uh uh, thing is basically just a copy from another piece of code not that we're going to need all this but it shows you how you can by using this file um, you can do the setup of the CLI you can compile the code you can upload the code to the board all using the command line um, and, and so it's it's really powerful to to get us all working together for that Arduino code so yeah if, if you are going to work on the code take a look at how I did that um, make any suggestions that, that you want to there. Uh, you can, like I said, mark up the code that's right here. We have a quick start file and a readme file, or you can just put a notes file in there if you want. Um, this way we, we can start um, at least getting the, the pre-code set up because we know what some of the, the components are gonna be are on the board, like a, um, a, a NeoPixels or something like that. Um, I'm open to doing a, a screen on on it, but I don't think that really fits with either of these badges. I know I was doing a screen with another badge, that's why you see this this GA screen. Um, and I, the screen is cool, but with these two badge concepts, I just don't see where it really fits in. The only one I was thinking it might fit in is the Cowboys versus Dinosaurs. If we had like a screen in this a round screen in the center of the poker table we could have that display animated um cards being played out 
so we could actually flip the the cards and show hands or whatever but that might be a lot of work considering <laughs> that's our shortest time frame badge so i don't know about that so for now we'll stick with just regular art and no screen on that one what do you use for an ide uh primarily i use vs code now yeah, and uh, I, I used to use um, Atom, um, but when Microsoft bought GitHub, uh, because Microsoft puts out VS Code, they kind of, they were the death of Atom. So. <laughs> uh, so, and VS Code is decent. I, not like I had anything against it before, but yeah, and, and really with this kind of code, uh, any any IDE will, will work because you're just editing the, the text files, right? But um, one of the things that I like with like the, the VS Code, um, like if I open this up, if you have on a Windows box, uh, the Git Bash installed or on a Linux box, just your regular terminal, it has a nice integrated terminal that you can um, pop open. And uh, like I'm in our Cowboys versus Dinosaurs uh, directory there and it's because I'm streaming and I have a million things open. It's taken a minute to open the terminal. <laughs> um, but yeah, once that opens, uh, there it is. Um, I, 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 yeah, minimize that. Um, I like it because I am a command line Git person. I, I don't use the, the GUI too much. And so I love being able to just dump Git status or, um, or Git commit get push right from here right from the window <laughs> or um the other thing uh being a, a linux guy um let's say i, I for whatever reason i want to do something other than edit this file in text i want to do something crazy like regex or something i still have vi i can vi my readme file And then I can do my all my regex strings and stuff like that. So yeah, VS Code works pretty good. All right, well I think, like I said, I, I promised this would be a shorter meeting than um, usual. Usually we go about an hour, but tonight being the first meeting and a lot of intro stuff going on, um, figured I'd keep it uh, short and sweet. So um, any questions or comments or ideas before we wrap this thing? I would just say I think the artwork's real cool. I like the concepts. Yeah, I can't wait to, to turn those concepts into um, real art on the badges because I, I, once I get the idea, I, that's always the hardest part. And I think we're, we're beyond that now. Now it's just turning it into reality, which is hard, but not as hard as coming up with the idea. So, all right. Well, then I will um, wrap the badge team call. And um, for those that are going to either watching this stream that are not part of the badge team or are going to watch this later on YouTube, uh, yeah, um, welcome to our uh, our badge diaries, um, which is starting new for 2024, and we'll try to do weekly updates to show our progress on, on where we go with these badges. All right. Thank you all.